Again, good afternoon. My name is Rich Ryan, as mentioned. I'm the CEO of 615 Technologies. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys today about customizing augmented reality hardware to fit the specific needs of enterprise customers. A brief introduction to 615. Um, we have fielded thousands of customized display solutions, primarily for US Special Operations Forces, that have been used in extremely demanding environments. More recently, we've begun working with enterprise customers looking for augmented reality solutions customized to fit their specific operations. We're really seeing a shift in how industry is thinking about augmented reality hardware. Initially, many companies first experimented with off-the-shelf off solutions and began to understand how this hardware <coughs> could impact their operation. What we're experiencing today is a shift away from off-the-shelf solutions and a demand to build a specific tool for a specific job. They don't want the hardware to dictate what they do. They want the hardware to streamline what they do. I want to walk through a couple quick examples uh, from the defense space to illustrate how a handful of variables can have a dramatic effect on the resulting hardware. The Department of Defense came to us with a problem. With the proliferation of sensors and drones deployed in theater, command posts now had incredible access to real-time data on the battlefield. The problem was getting that information to the operator on the ground or in the fight. They asked us to build a wearable display system that could provide drone video feeds and critical battlefield information directly to the individual soldier. Their key priorities were power, uh, resolution, ruggedization, and cost. What we ended up designing for them was a system that utilized an 800 by 600 resolution display which matched the sensors that were on the battlefield, drew l less than one watt of power, weighed 51 grams, and was fully ruggedized. In a separate requirement, Air Force JTACs needed a superior solution for an immersive virtual reality training. To reduce training costs and maintain proficiency, the client needed a display that could provide the most realistic view of the world possible. This required the system to have a wide field of view and enable an operator to pick up an aircraft at five kilometers in any portion of the display. As a result, the final system utilized a custom designed optic solution combined with dual 1920 by 1200 displays and integrated with a fully de uh, separately designed nine axis head tracker. So the reason I present these two cases is that at first blush, they seem like similar systems fundamentally providing video to the individual through a head-worn display. But the few variations in the component selection, which were driven by the original use cases, created a huge difference, if nothing else in cost. The first product, the TACI, delivers for around $2,500. The HD Bino costs around $25,000. So the Air Force had to be really sure that the criteria that they had developed was the right criteria, and the same holds true for industry. So what do we mean when we talk about creating purpose-built hardware for enterprise demands? We're all familiar with the general parameters of augmented reality display, field of view, resolution, weight, but there are hundreds if not thousands of variables that come into play when tailoring a solution. How big should the eye box be? What should be the power requirement? What brightness is required? What's the optimal display? And just as important or more important, is when I maximize one variable, what am I trading for in other areas? And when we take just one of these variables, like display characteristics, into account, we realize there are a ton of options inside each one of these variables. Any one of these displays Selecting any one of these displays has a huge impact on the user's experience, the power requirements, and the overall AR capability of the system. So how are we working today with some of the leaders in enterprise augmented reality to build custom solutions? Together, we're first spending significant time up front understanding the business need, not unlike our prior speaker, and really understanding use case, where they are in the field, how their, how their uh, current business processes can be supported. By understanding the exact use cases, how they wish to integrate into their current installed base of hardware and software, and what their target cost or price point is, they set the platform to make the right choices and the right trade-offs for a customized solution. 
The business needs defines the optical characteristics, priorities around human factors and environmental demands, and establishes what integrated functionality is required of the system itself. In our observation, the test and evaluation of these optimized systems is significantly more in depth than the pilots using off-the-self solution. More importantly, the goal of the pilot is not to figure out how to change their current process. It's how to determine how to iterate on the hardware to achieve superior results. When we speak to industry and they discuss the barriers to scaling off the self shelf solutions, it's becoming more clear that optimizing hardware will address many of the issues that they raise. Having enterprise level reliability in an all day wearable device that seamlessly integrates with their current operations, leverages the data available now rather than demanding the creation of new data, all serve to reduce the cost and the risk of larger scale implementation. So I'm gonna apologize because the next couple slides are pretty busy. Um, but I wanted to provide some additional detail around two industry examples of hardware optimization around industry use cases. The first example is of an industry partner looking at a handful of operations in the warehouse or on the factory floor. We selected multiple operations such as picking and sorting in a warehouse or workflow instruction on a factory floor that had significant commonalities. The most important factors to consider for the development of this hardware were durability, long battery life, swappable with multiple users, and a relatively low cost. By stripping out many unnecessary features typically found in some of the off-the-shelf solutions, we were able to provide an initial pilot system that provided 10 to 12 hours of battery life in a system that weighed less than 50 grams. It provided true optical see-through capability and it tied directly to their existing platforms through Wi-Fi and Bluetooth LE. And a little bit on the other end of the spectrum, we're currently at an earlier stage with a partner in the first responder space. While we're still identifying the specific use cases they wish to address with augmented reality device, we can already see the requirements are driving a very different design than mentioned earlier. Not only do they wish to provide alerts and data to an officer in the field, they would like to integrate various sensors like short or long wave IR, real-time video streaming, higher resolution image capture, situational awareness, and provide the capability for facial recognition. This is leading to a more modular system with a base monolithic board capable of taking in various sensors. And it's driving a need for a much more powerful processor, demanding significantly more power resources and dramatically impact the construct of the overall system. So to kind of wrap up, I, I'm not implying that there's eventually gonna be 250 customized solutions for 250 individual use cases out there. There's clearly commonalities across empire use, uh, uh, enterprise use cases. Providing all day wearability, high reliability, long battery life, being physically durable, and seamlessly integrating into the current architecture will continue to be priorities for industries. As industries continue to move away from off the shelf solutions towards customization, the progress made in each enterprise vertical will provide significant advancement throughout the enterprise market. Thank you.